greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And this time around, we got this thing right here. This is the Timex Data Link Model 70 from 1995. And yeah, it's, I guess, what you could call an early example of a smart watch in the sense that. You know, it's a watch, but it's also got uh, programmable appointments and calendars and reminders and notes and things like that. But what makes it really worthy of oddware, I think, is the way that you get data onto the data link. And that is by pointing it at a CRT monitor on your PC running Windows 3.1. And it synchronizes just by looking at your display. Yeah, thanks to some generous donations from these fine folks who watch LGR, I've got a couple of these. So let's take a look at the Timex Data Link. So what we've got here is the Timex Data Link, specifically the original Model 70 released in 1995. Wireless PC to watch communication by light. Ah uh, man, the sci-fi, it's real life. The personal manager on your wrist. Yeah, this thing was pretty unique for its time. I don't think there was anything else quite like it before this and not much after. In fact, most of the things that came after were just the same thing repackaged. We'll get to that. But yeah, the Timex data link, it was actually announced by Bill Gates himself at a Microsoft event in June of 1994 and got hyped up in the press for, you know, six or five months or something like that until it finally hit store shelves toward the end of 1994 and more widely in 1995. And it did so at a price of $130 for the base model 70 watch with your basic wrist strap. In fact, uh, this one right here, yeah, you can see still has the price sticker at the bottom there. And yeah, uh, that 70 uh, refers to the model 7532 is the specific style of watch face and band. This one's kind of a dark brown leather with greenish teal stitching and some orange accents. But there were five models 70 at launch, each one with a different watch face and band combination. Some had fancier leather, some had nylon, some had metal. And of course you could customize them with your own bands. Uh, but yeah, they were intended to provide a, a PDA, electronic organizer-like functionality on your wrist and with water resistance. As far as I know, there were no PDAs or organizers that were water resistant or anything like that at the time. But uh, yeah, man, eh, really, really cool idea for 94, 95. Just syncing to a PC wirelessly using your computer's CRT monitor. There's a built-in optical sensor on the watch itself. And yeah, you just hold it up to the monitor and you know, here's some footage of that kind of thing going on. It's just uh, like a barcode that goes across the screen, flashes really quickly, and then that tells the watch what you want to put on it. And of course the marketing, the press, all sorts of folks that could get their hands on these things and try to sell them. They were all pumping this thing up. I mean, they were even live in-person events. Yo, it was like magic. You gotta come see in store this demonstration of this crazy new futuristic tech. Yeah, I mean, this is part of a growing 1990s wearables trend, really continuing on from the 1980s calculator and computer watches and all those that had the tons of buttons and you could store basic information on there like phone numbers or notes or things like that. And yeah, this continues on with that idea. Instead, it's really built to work with a computer. In fact, yeah, it was developed in conjunction with Microsoft. The Microsoft logo is all over the thing, pretty much on all of the early watches on the watch face. You'll see a Microsoft logo on there somewhere. And it relies on the data link software also co-developed with Microsoft. And no surprise, it integrates as well with things like Microsoft Outlook and Schedule Plus and other personal information managers later on. But yeah, it was very much designed with Microsoft things in mind. And MS even had a deal for a time where they offered these watches as a mail-in bonus with select purchases of Microsoft Office 95. So yeah, very well integrated into that whole ecosystem, or at least that was the plan. And this was actually followed up with a bunch of different models. I'm not going to go into every single one of them, but yeah, there was a model 150 in 1996 for a data link with double the memory and also introduced these small wrist apps that were sent through the mail and floppy disks. You can get those and 
transfer uh, some extra functions to your watch that way. There was also the Iron Man Triathlon editions in 1997. And uh, yeah, they also added things like timers, multi-lap stopwatches, and other sporty things. Uh, but even more interesting to me though, there was these Motorola Timex Beepware collaboration ones in 1998. And they acted as a wrist mounted pager or beeper, hence the name. And they worked on the 900 megahertz band and they had the tech to receive pages and they'd show up on your wrist. It's a pretty cool thing. And some of those beepware models also featured flex time synchronization with your pager service provider to actually update the time on your watch automatically. Holy crap, could you imagine? And of course, uh, they pretty much ended out the range in the early 2000s, like with the USB models introduced in 2003 with a little better display, more memory, a tone generator, as well as downloadable wrist apps. So a little bit larger, a little easier to get just online. And these included games like Pong, and Space Invaders clones, yeah, playing those on your wrist, that's a flex. And another thing these Datalink watches are kind of well known for is being one of the four watches that are qualified for space travel by NASA. So you saw these up on space stations and whatnot used by astronauts and cosmonauts for years. It's no Omega Speedmaster, but hey, it's still a pretty neat claim to fame nonetheless. Yeah, people are into their space watches and the Datalink is one of them. And it's also worth noting that it is CRTs only that these can synchronize with, at least on their own for these original optical models. There were LCDs, of course, back in the day, mostly on laptops and notebook computers, but those required a serial notebook adapter. It was effectively just a standalone infrared blaster because the problem was they said that the refresh wasn't quite up to what they needed and LCDs just didn't get bright enough. And yeah, I have tested this. It doesn't work. <laughs> it just, the, the, even, even on newer LCDs, eh, it's not a thing. So you really did need that additional adapter. They weren't just trying to sell you some extra crap. And one last thing to note, uh, modern LED bulbs and lamps and things like that, any of those kind of lighting situations will mess up the transfer process as well. Even on a nice, bright, well-synced CRT, yeah, the flickering and whatever refresh rate that the LEDs do these days, it just screws it up. So you, yeah, you're probably gonna be seeing uh, later parts of this video just dimly lit, and that's why. And yeah, I mentioned the tech being used in other devices later on that weren't by Timex, they licensed the tech like Royal. They had their FL95 organizer, and there was also the Tiger PDA2000, which did a lot of the same stuff that the watch was doing, just with presumably slightly better display and more buttons and all that kind of thing. I don't have those, but what I do have, I actually ran across these while looking for Datalink watches a while back. And yeah, we've got uh, the Rolodex Flash PC Companion, and the DSi Electronics eBrain, which also use the Timex Datalink system and related software. Obviously you can tell I haven't opened these up yet. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but maybe another time. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they do a lot of the same stuff as the watches, but of course a completely different form factor and some other additions and capabilities. And this is from 1998, this is from 2001. So kind of towards the end of especially the Model 70, but even the 150s, uh, lifespan. Uh, yeah, uh, just a fascinating bit of technology that multiple companies wanted to get in on, and understandably so. I mean, wireless communication, always appealing, and especially seemed futuristic in the 90s. Let's go ahead and get this one opened up. So much paperwork. This watch in particular doesn't work, so I'm going to be using another one from here onward, but I just want to show it real quick, because, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of like this design with the brown and orange and greenish things going on. It is leather. It smells like leather. Yeah, little watch. But uh, like I said, I have another one. This is the 70342. Yeah, classic liquid crystal display. We'll go through the features here momentarily. This one has a nice uh, leather and nylon thing going on. Again, kind of digging the color scheme. It's very 90s. Yeah, I packed a good number of things in here. So we've got uh, the software. This is, I think, the earliest version. It's the earliest one I've come across. It's version 1.0a for Windows 3.1 only, 1994. And I got some license agreement and warranty things. Uh, this actually came from one of the other packages I got. I just kind of stuck it all together. But yeah, I can see an advertisement for Microsoft Schedule Plus and some other Windows 95 things that it can integrate with. 
Now we've got a little quick start sheet here. Installation, communication, dealios. It's really simple actually, refreshingly so, to use. And uh, yeah, a couple of different manuals, kind of like brochures. <laughs> so the watch user's guide and the software. And both, again, pretty straightforward. There's actually not a whole lot of complication with this, which is nice. You know, it mostly just works like any other Timex watch from the time, from the Timex time, time things, watch things. Anyway, it's a watch. Really the only thing that is uh, awesome about it is of course that synchronization stuff and the fact that it works with this software just by looking at a CRT. I don't think there's anything really terribly interesting in here. It pretty much just takes you through, uh, yeah, like what everything does. <laughs> no, no real surprises there. Now, as for the watch itself, well, yeah, it's kind of small. I don't have the exact measurements. I'll put it up here on screen, but yeah, it, it's not a huge watch. At least this one, I think the Model 150 was a bit bigger, uh, but it is water resistant up to 100 meters. Hence, you can see the little 100 right there. So that is pretty awesome. It also has that trademarked Indiglo electroluminescent backlighting, which can't really see it all in this lighting, but let me switch over to another shot. Yeah, it's got that. That had been out for a couple of years when this watch was announced. Uh, I was so proud to have an Indiglo backlit watch as a kid. <laughs> it's just like a cheap Timex from, I don't know, Roses or something back in the day, but I don't know. I was cool. It was totally cool. As for the battery and battery life, behind this back plate here, we have a CR2025, well, three volt battery. Not supposed to last for three years, give or take. And that's a lifespan that Timex said is based on the following. The Indiglo backlight only being used for seven seconds a day, doing one data download per day, and two 10 second alarms per day. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less, I guess. I don't know. It's rather precise for three years worth of a battery estimate, but okay. I guess they know what they're talking about. And yeah, this being the Model 70, uh, this sort of a signifier of what it can do in that it stores 70 entries in any combination of the four databases that are built into the watch. And so each of those entry uh, consists of just a series of numbers and uh, 15 character alphanumeric text message. I think that's it. So not a whole lot of data per thing, but you know, the databases are appointments, anniversaries, phone numbers, and to-do lists, and that you just get by pressing the mode button. So, uh, well, here, yeah, it's also good alarms, but yeah, multiple alarms, and you can set the uh, the sound here. Unfortunately, the sound is broken on this one. Don't know what's up with that, but uh, let's see. We've also got appointments. So, yeah, I've got an appointment right there, two o'clock today. I'm supposed to film this. I guess I did anniversaries we've got one coming up on 420 it looks like and it will notify you of those as they're about to happen you can signify how soon you want to be notified on the app on your pc and then phone numbers you can just put things in like 8675309 right here in case you want to call and uh, then there's also the to-do lists and these are sorted by order of priority so first priority today for me is farting uh, and that's good i think that's yeah that's the only thing that i'm supposed to do today in terms of my to-do list so and that's it uh, there's nothing else on here except the synchronization mode, which is if you go past, yeah, calm mode. It says calm, ready. And then this little optical sensor up at the top there, that just starts looking out for those visual signals on your CRT display. Uh, there's not a whole lot else. This bottom left button also lets you switch over to another clock real quick. So you can see something in a different time zone or uh, daylight savings or, you know, whatever. Um, but that, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it just functions as your typical Timex watch from the time period. By the way, it's also worth noting that the communication is one way. It's receive only. You can't actually send anything from the watch to your PC, although I'm not sure what on here you would want to send because you can't really input very much. Like, like all of the, the things on those lists, you can only input on the computer side. You can't actually do it through the watch. Really, the only thing you can set on here is you know, like I said, time and date and alarms. All right, well, okay, I'm done rambling about all this stuff for now. Let's go ahead and get this thing going on a Windows 3.1 PC, the LGR Woodgrain 486, and see what it's like to work with the software side of things and communicating back and forth over a CRT image. Oh, prime oddware. Yeah, let's do this.
Okay, well, I got the computer going here and a watch on my wrist. I'm not a watch wearing person and this one's strap is too small. It's like an eight inch one, but <laughs> it barely fits. So I, I, I would definitely have another strap if I were to wear this. That's beside the point. Uh, Timex Datalink software. Yeah, Microsoft. Timex together, jointly developing things in 1994. So, in order for this to work, I'm going to need to turn off my lights because, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't work with LEDs and literally every light in my house is LED. So, hey, Flurbnerp, turn off everything. All right, turning 16 things off. All right, so we're gonna have to do this just by what little bit of light is coming in through the windows over there. Kind of a rainy day, so whatever, whatever man. Uh, yeah, so we've got these six different areas here that we can set on the software itself, which will be sent to the watch. So we have appointments. We can, yeah, select here from whatever the heck. We're gonna post uh, this appointment. Post this vid. And you have different sending options. So that's the appointments, anniversaries, similar kind of thing, except that it's going to tell you, like you put in a, a date for, you know, whatever. So let me put in a date here, and then we're gonna have uh, just some text that'll display on the watch. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's just very basic little bits of information that you can put in any of these. Uh, same with the phone numbers, and how many you can put in depends on, well, like overall, how many things you have that you're trying to submit to the watch, uh, it only takes 70 entries more or less. So even with that little bit that we have in right, right now, it's just one phone number and a couple of these other things, it's already 5% full. So you're kind of restricted on that and it just sort of goes back and forth between the different um, bits of information. So yeah, this is kind of nice though. I, I really like this feature where you can just set your, not only your PC's clock, but the time zone, the time and date and whatnot to send to the watch itself so you don't have to do it manually. You can do it manually, setting it like any other Timex watch, but you don't have to. Uh, and alarms. Yeah, if you want to change the alarms on here instead of doing it on the watch, you can do that. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it other than changing things between 12 and 24 hour time uh, and calibrating. Let me just show that really quick. So this, depending on the monitor you have plugged in. I don't really know what it's doing exactly, but uh, yeah, whenever you've got another monitor going, it does this calibration thing. And then it also takes you through how to get the watch going in terms of positioning and pressing the buttons and stuff like that. It's a nice little tutorial, very self-explanatory. And I did this <laughs> multiple times before figuring out that, oh yeah, the LEDs are preventing me from doing anything. Um, but yeah, without lights on or with incandescents, of course, it would be fine, but I don't have any incandescent lights. Uh, you also have this little sample tone. So that's nice. That's letting you know basically what the watch is gonna sound like. Like that. And that tells you that the watch is in the appropriate position. Handy stuff. Of course, the, the speaker, the, the little beeper that's in there wasn't working on this watch when I first got it. So I actually swapped the innards of this one with the other one that I had. They had, it was just in way worse shape overall. So yeah, I took the innards out of that one, put them over here and then, you know, and now it's got a beeper, which is good. So do we want to send sample data? No, that's just, uh, it just sends, well, sample data. But since we have some stuff in there ourselves, we'll just send what we typed in a bit ago. And we'll just hit send to watch. And again, it's got a handy little graphical step-by-step -step tutorial. Hold it six to 12 inches away from the center of the monitor. And it can do either way. So, you know, left or right-handed. I just have it on my right uh, because it, I don't know, seemed easier for doing video. Typically I'd put a watch on my left. Make sure it says COM ready. It does. And it says, done, data okay. How cool is that? And now we have the, uh, well, I know you can't see it, but I'll switch over to another view. 
yeah, you can see we have all of that stuff that we put in on the computer side on our watch <laughs> through a CRT monitor only. It's it's so cool. I, I, I don't you know. It makes sense that it's possible, you know, it is just basically sending binary data, I suppose, and just really quickly. You know, it's almost similar to some of the effects that we saw on like the Danmere backup system on Oddware some time ago, where that was sending a bunch of signals to VHS and putting data that way visually. But yeah, it's just really, really cool that you have a little wrist handheld device in the mid 90s that let you do that kind of thing. It's it's awesome. And yes, I have tried it with like multiple watches, you know, the, the two I have, just holding them both up there. And yeah, it'll transfer the same information to both of them, which led to this satisfying result. <laughs> you can get both watches perfectly synchronized to whatever your PC is set to. Just reminds me of that scene in Back to the Future when Doc Brown's all like, oh yeah, my watch and the dog's watch are perfectly synchronized together as so you can see time travel happening. Anyway, honestly, that's about it. Uh, it's just this. The only other thing that I might be able to show would be like the Windows 95 version of it, but it's the same software. Like nothing's different. It's just the Windows 95 UI. We'll just do it again because it's fun. <laughs> it's also worth noting that this, this this does not work on Windows NT or higher, really, any NT-based thing. Oops, I don't have it turned on. You might want to remember to do that. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. So yeah, Windows NT, Windows 2000, anything based on that, you know, XP and above, doesn't work with that because, uh, well, I don't really know why. It just specifically says, on Timex's website later on that it doesn't work with NT and CRTs, that it wasn't able to synchronize or go as quickly or refresh or something. I don't know. Either way though, yeah, you're stuck with Windows 3.1 or 95 and 98. Presumably Windows Me as well. Hey, Florp Nerp, turn everything back on. Sure, turning 16 things on. Yeah, look at that. It's trying to synchronize with things right now. And that's just because the LED lights are on. It's it's the flicker, I suppose. Anyway, but yeah, that, that's it for the uh, the Timex data link. <laughs> as long as you don't have LED lights going, it works and it works well. In terms of oddware, you know, it's not like it's a broken thing. It's just the implementation of what it's doing is somewhat odd, you know, communicating. Oh dear, error, resend. Anyway, yeah, it's just the, the way that it does things makes it odd in my book. It's really, really cool though, despite being obsolete and mostly forgotten. Yeah, dude, <laughs> this thing is so cool. <laughs> I would have gone absolutely nuts even just knowing that this existed back in 95. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. The fact that it's got the little sensor on there that allows that kind of data transfer with your PC. I, I don't know, like even now, that's just a neat thing. Like what if you could have a, I don't know, your phone or something and you just hold it up to your computer in terms of I don't know, the front camera or something and it just sees your computer and it synchronizes all of your information that way. I mean, I know you have even cooler technology in a way now, you don't have to point anything at anything, but I don't know, pointing stuff at other stuff is cool. Though it obviously had its limitations, you know, not working on, later versions of Windows or not working on an LCD without the little infrared adapter, which on its own would be kind of cool to check out. Uh, or, you know, the little PDA things that use the same technology. I'm curious how those work. Uh, but anyway, that all might be for some other video. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing this video on the Timex data link. And hey, if you had one of these back in the day, or maybe you still use one, yeah, let me know. Curious what your experiences might have been. And if you'd like to see more LGR Oddware or other things that I've covered in the past, you can see those already on the channel or stick around for new videos in the works. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>